Welcome everyone to Virik and Jeb have fun with rockets and today we're going to send this rather unusual payload into space. Now most people will realize this is not the most aerodynamic of craft so we're going to use fairings to improve its aerodynamic qualities and we're going to use procedural fairings for that. Now one of the advantages of this mod is they come one stage earlier in career mode, which is always a bonus. A second bonus is they come in just two forms. Uh, they have a fairing base uh, with just the basic ring, and they have a fairing base with this extending superstructure, which helps if you have a rather unusually shaped uh, craft, a satellite for example, that needs a little bit of extra clearance at its base. But we're going to use this standard bearing ring to add the fairing around our craft. So if we get it out, the first thing you'll notice is it's rather small. It's the uh, standard uh, variety for the 1.25 uh, meter set of equipment. Now if we zoom in just a little bit you'll also be able to see some faint blue lines and these faint blue lines are the shell as projected by procedural fairings. This is the shape the fairing will take when we mount it. So let's have a look at mounting the fairing. Now again one of the bonuses there are only two fairing parts there is the conic fairing, and the conic fairing gives you a much more pointed, bullet-shaped fairing. And there's also the egg-shaped fairing, which is much more rounded shape. So let's pick the conic fairing part. Uh, you'll notice, uh, if you look down at the base there, there are two little green globes, so two attachment points, so let's get two symmetry. And one of the other advantages of uh, procedural fairings is you don't have to worry about putting them the right way around. Just attach them to the mounting points and hey presto, your fairing is built all for you. Now this is the uh, conic variety, so you can see it very uh, bullet shaped, uh, more uh, bullet shaped, sharper point. It's an aesthetic thing rather than anything that makes any real difference. So let's just have a look at the egg-shaped fairing, so let's take that as well, put it down here at the base, click it on, and you'll see this one is much more rounded, much more egg-shaped. Now again, it is uh, more of an aesthetic change, doesn't really make a great deal of difference to how it will fly. But if we take a little bit of a more distant look at our craft, we'll notice we've got a rather um, un- atmospheric friendly joint here um, which is not ple uh, visually pleasing on the eye either. So how do we deal with that? Well let's get rid of the fairing itself and just take the fairing, uh, separate the fairing from the launch stage and if we zoom right in we can see the fairing under there. If we right click it we get its uh, menu up and one of the things we can do is change its size. You'll see its size here is for the 1.25 millimeter part. So if we click this, we can increase it to 2.5, 3.75, and we can also use the smaller arrows just to change it very, very incrementally, just to uh, customize it to any particular payload that you might have. So uh, let's bring it back down to the 2.5 millimeter millimeter 2.5 meter size let's remove this adapter uh, bring the launch stage back in you can see the blue lines there have extended again to uh, fit the shape of our, uh, our orbital vehicle and our payload so let's go and get our egg shaped fairing again and place it on the side again it doesn't matter that they're the wrong size because procedural fairings will work out the right size for you. Now another one of the things you can adjust, if we just take the fairing off again, is the number of pieces or nodes that your fairing has. So if you again right click the fairing base, one of the things you can change is the number of nodes as I say. It currently has two nodes or two pieces, so let's just change it to four nodes and four symmetrical pieces. So again if we change symmetry to four, 
get our egg-shaped fairing, place it on the side, you'll see the four pieces there, and again the fairing is built for us, but this time in four pieces. You can just about see the four pieces, just see the lines joining the pieces there, and if I highlight each piece, those are the pieces that will be jettisoned when the time comes. So how do you jettison your pieces? Well, they come as, just as a decoupler might have a staging section, so do the egg-shaped fairings. You can just see the egg-shaped fairing uh, section down there. So grab that staging section and move it to the approximate location in the staging set that you're going to need it. So that's how to uh, build your fairing using procedural fairings. So let's go out onto the launch pad and actually see it work. Well, we can see our pill-shaped payload there, all hidden away. Jeb is all nice and safe. Now, to make it a little bit easier for me, I'm going to get a uh, launch script, and I'm going to run my uh, Ascend 5 launch script that I have ready prepared, so let's launch. Now we have full throttle with SAS on and uh, as you'll know a very powerful engine in there, the skipper engine, that is going to be way more powerful than we need to complete this launch. But that will also emphasise the fact that our very un-aerodynamic payload is now aerodynamically uh, safely inside our procedural fairing. So. Uh, at the moment, quite low down in the atmosphere, 140 metres per second, no aerodynamic effects visible as yet, but as our thrust to weight ratio rapidly approaches 2, uh, and passing it very quickly I suspect, we should start to see some of the aerodynamic forces and stress appearing on our payload, or at least on the shell of our payload. So there we go, just past 5 kilometres nearing the top of the first part of the atmosphere and we can start now to see some of the aerodynamic effects. Now the joint between the payload and the command capture was a docking port and that's not the strongest of joints and I didn't want to cover everything with struts because they look rather ugly when in space so another of the advantages of the procedural fairing shell is that those aerodynamic forces aren't ripping apart your ship needing struts to keep it together so uh, as you can see uh, we've got quite a lot of uh, effects there and that would certainly have ripped our payload apart by now so we're at uh, 14 kilometers about halfway through the second part of the atmosphere, continuing to gain speed very rapidly. Our solid fuel boosters should be done in a second. But now you can start seeing heating effects, and again, that would have had a devastating effect on our payload. But Jeb's safe inside, completely unaware of what's going on around him, getting ready to stage the solid fuel boosters just entering the third part of the atmosphere now. Heating effects are still quite visible, but the atmosphere is now rapidly thinning. And there we go. We are now safely through both the aerodynamic and the heating effects um, with a perfectly safe and secure payload. Now we have uh, reached our uh, intended target apoapsis of 80 kilometers, so it is time to release the fairing. As you can see, we are well outside the atmosphere. So let's hit stage. And away go in a, a ballet maneuver. Our four nodes are four parts of our fairing. And we can now proceed into space, set up our orbit, safe in the knowledge that not only Jeb, but our payload is perfectly safe. So I'd like you to thank you for watching this episode of Virik and Jeb. Have fun with rockets, hope you've learned something about procedural fairings, and I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.